When most people look at a condenser, they imagine the air blowing straight up and away from the fan, but in reality, that's not what happens. The fan blades don't just push the air upward, they also spin it, uh, creating this twisting motion as the air leaves the top. And you could think of it like this little tornado or vortex forming right above the unit. Now that swirling column of air doesn't rise cleanly. It rolls, it curls, it's very unstable, especially on breezy days. And part of it can actually loop back down around the edges of the unit. Now you can see on this side of the unit here, that's not happening. It's blowing straight up on the outer edge there. And that's exactly what we want to see. And when I take the temperature of the air coming into the side of the coil there, it's ambient temperature. It's about 78 degrees. Now you can see here when I take the temperature on the other side of the coil where it's rolling over, especially near the wall, we're reading like 88 degrees there, which is a 10 degree difference. It's pretty significant. Now, it's not just around that rim where I've seen it spill over and feed back into the condenser coil. Um, I've also seen that main vortex itself kind of collapse whenever we get like a strong breeze coming by. Um, and it actually swirls down around the outside of the condensing unit before it comes back up again. So I thought about what I can do to kind of clean this air mess up a little bit so we're not pulling that hot exhaust right back across the condenser coil. So I borrowed from a little engineering that I've seen in cooling towers and commercial systems where they have this kind of baffle that directs the air more upwards. Um, and they have these veins in there that kind of help break down that swirling motion and just straighten it out a little bit. So I came up with this basic design where I can kind of have that same effect on the condensing unit. And I went ahead and I slapped it together. I didn't put a lot of work into this. It maybe took me 10, 15 minutes to make this out of scrap metal laying on the floor and I just threw it on top of the unit. So when I started the unit up, it actually worked pretty decently. It wasn't swirling around and twisting as much as it was before. Now it's kind of a nice straight column going up um, and we're not getting that vortex kind of collapse in the breeze where it's falling down and swirling around the outside of the unit. It's kind of pretty stable now. So when I took the temperatures around the outside of the unit again, I was back down closer to ambient pretty much all the way around. It was still about 80, 81 in between the wall and the unit, but uh, that was a far distance from where we were before at 88. Now there's all kinds of products out there. There's misters, there's all kinds of shading techniques and everything, but the biggest source of heat um, in this area is from the actual unit itself. And if it's just cannibalizing its own exhaust air, uh, you're missing out on some efficiency there. I mean, this option is probably just as effective as these other gimmicky things. So it's really easy to make. You could do it yourself, make it practically out of anything. You don't have to go buy anything to do this. But just food for thought. Do your own digging, make your own decisions. But I think I'll probably just leave that on there. See how it does over the long term. I would figure 5, 10 degree difference uh, across that coil, probably make a little dent in the electric bill over the course of a whole summer. Who knows? We'll see.